Hello, I'm Christina Drummond, the Executive Director for the OE Book Usage Data Trust. In this recording, I'm going to provide a brief update on our global collaborative effort. Our effort, also referred to as OAEBU for short, has formalized our mission, which is to focus on championing strategies for the improved publication and management of open access books by exchanging reliable usage data in a trusted, equitable, and community-governed way. And we do this in line with our principles, which themselves are in line with the principles for open scholarly infrastructure. Our effort took root over conversations at the 2015 Scholarly Communications Institute. Our first set of principal investigators are thought leaders in our field, including Charles Watkinson, Becky Welsenbach, Brian O'Leary, Cameron Nealon, Lucy Montgomery, and Catherine Skinner. These individuals led the first two phases of our work where community stakeholders came together through interviews, workshops, and focus groups to surface the shared opportunities and challenges that surround OA book usage data reporting and analytics. This foundational research prepared us for our now current focus on developing governance building blocks for an OA book usage data focused international data space, which would be in line with emerging European frameworks for trusted data exchange across public and private organizations. A number of foundational research outputs were generated in recent years and inform our efforts today. Facilitated in-person virtual workshops generated a white paper on what the possibilities are that exist just over the horizon. They also informed our second research project, which focused on documenting the use cases, data supply chain, and testing out some open source code uh, to support our infrastructure. The initial research on data collaboratives highlighted the potential for data trusts and data spaces to facilitate economies of scale when it comes to usage data aggregation, while also making it possible to achieve benchmarking by pulling together restricted and controlled access to all different sources of OA book usage data. In this second research phase, we worked with representatives from public and private organizations through our project advisory board, technical advisory group, and the OA usage data exchange workflow mapping and dashboard requirements gathering efforts related to our proof of concept data dashboards. We engaged over 100 stakeholders from across five continents through our virtual interviews and focus groups. If you have seen a talk of mine, you know how much I love to refer to the foundational reports that came out of this project. First of all, we published the OA book usage data analytics and reporting use cases by stakeholder report to illuminate the specific data analytic reporting queries sought by different book publishing and discovery stakeholders. We found that different stakeholders wanted to use OA usage data, not just for reporting, but for internal operations and strategic data-driven decision-making. Applications of OA usage data are wide ranging from informing collection development and editorial strategy to evaluating promotional campaigns and informing print editions. Publishers and libraries sought to leverage OA book usage analytics for OA program operations. We also found that common to all was a shared burden of having to allocate time and data science expertise to combining and managing the counter compliant reports alongside related internal data and non counter compliant web analytics provided from various book hosts, aggregators and providers. We also sponsored work by Michael Clark and Laura Ritchie to document related data transfer and metadata standards and usage data workflows. As they elegantly document in the workflow shown, the generated usage data on the right travels through library management systems, book aggregators, publishing platforms and repositories to in turn generate structured usage data reports for publishers, libraries, scholars, and funders on the left. We see through the points where multiple lines come together, publishers and libraries share the burden of combining multiple structured usage reports for use downstream. Through six in-depth research partnerships, a Curtin University-based technical team led by Cameron Neal and Lucy Montgomery developed open source code and workflow documentation related to the automation of OA book usage data fetching, processing, and aggregation from the Directory of Open Access Books, DOAB, Google Analytics, Google Books, Iris UK, Awaken, Onyx, and UCL Discovery. This work will continue to inform the technical build-out of our data trust in future years. However, issues of data quality, provenance, and trust had to be addressed 
prior to a technical data intermediary service being launched. We had to consider how to foster trusted data processing and stewardship at scale across public and private usage data creators around the world, which brought us back to the importance of trust. Trust in data security for data sharing, trust in data processing algorithms, and trust that our effort would do no harm to those providing usage data, to those relying on the aggregated usage data feeds, or to those reflected in the data. Harvesting and storing a copy in the data warehouse is not a workable solution due to legal liability, operational risk, and privacy concerns, especially for our commercial data providers. Research on existing data collaboratives in finance and healthcare sectors surfaced the substantial European investment in industrial data spaces, also known as international data spaces or IDS for short. The IDS cyber infrastructure architecture model and certification standards related to security and transparency have been developing for the past few years to support compliance with upcoming regulatory requirements for data brokers as described in Europe's forthcoming Data Governance Act. Unlike today's traditional data brokerage models that leverage open data harvesting, web scraping, and data linking to transform and monetize downstream data products, Europe's new Data Governance Act framework will encourage a neutral network of certified data intermediaries that work to enforce ethical guidelines and data, gov data governance standards through data exchange networks. The International Data Spaces Association has brought together dozens of emerging data space efforts to develop data governance and stakeholder accountability measures to complement technical risk and contractual controls that can be deployed as they typically are through data lakes and data fabrics, effectively creating a data governance layer on top of the existing technical infrastructure efforts. Our OA Book Usage Data Trust is honored to be one of the groups represented in this constellation, working to translate what is being built uh, in the IDSA to the world of scholarly communications and to OA Book Usage Data Metrics in particular. As OA Usage Statistics are at their simplest, web analytics tied to IP addresses, which are classified as personal data in GDPR, our network of advisors made the decision last year to align our effort with the IDS model, recognizing that we want to continue to exchange data with European publishers, presses, and services in 2025 and beyond. This set the stage for our current phase of work. So what is on the roadmap for our next few years as we work to cross the valley of death and transition from a research project to an operational data intermediation network, i.e. a data space for OA book usage? We can see our destination, but now we have to make the crossing while building as we go. Fostering multi-party trust is at the core of what we'll be doing in our current Mellon-funded project that runs through 2025. To ensure that our data space is inclusive and global, we are working to develop ways to foster trusted data exchange and processing that are as open as possible, but as controlled as necessary to meet regulatory and ethical requirements. Achieving such trust requires building consensus with our stakeholders around, first of all, the security controls necessary for data transit, access, and processing. Secondly, the transparent and fair usage data processing algorithms for aggregation, privacy masking, and benchmarking. And third, we need consensus around ethical participation guidelines that will ensure that the big data elements of what we're doing through the data space will not do any harm to our readers, to our authors, or to the organizations that provide or rely on the exchanged usage data. We are actively investigating how to apply the data spaces frameworks to OA book usage so that we can reduce the system-wide resources spent on cross-platform usage data curation and aggregation, while also making it possible to have new analytics like benchmarking. Recognizing that we have to work across a range of OA book stakeholders, we've been aiming to develop community governance structures that recognize um, the variety of diversity we have, from publishers and discovery services to libraries, repositories, aggregators, and analytic services. All these efforts may be creating usage data or have an interest in accessing the processed information or raw usage data based on their access privileges. The question, of course, is how to do this with so many diverse parties at a global scale. The European Data Strategies International Data Space Framework and its standards provide us with a reference architecture model, core IDS system component specifications, and security requirements necessary to ensure trust and support future certification as a trusted, neutral 
data intermediary that is in compliance with the forthcoming European regulation. However, for such global open scholarly infrastructure, these technical building blocks are only part of what's needed and perhaps are the easiest part to put together. In line with the design principles for data spaces, we are now focusing on developing governance building blocks related to the financial sustainability, operational procedures, and organizational agreements that we would need to have in place between participating organizations in the data trust. This work complements the ongoing work at the IDSA on the technical architecture and precedes our technical systems gap analysis and integration efforts, which are represented on the screen as a technical building blocks on the left. This past July, the Mellon Foundation awarded our team 1.2 million US to continue strengthening our OA Book Usage Data Trust community governance by engaging community stakeholders to develop the ethical participation guidelines and understand the data trust return on investment for participation. Again, we're honored to have a diverse project advisory board and set of partners to inform the work that we'll be doing um, that I'm actually leading in conjunction with the Secretary General for OPRIS and the Chief Legal Advisor for Open Air. This project now sits uh, alongside a few others in development and are overseen by a board of trustees that governs the overall OA Book Usage Data Trust strategy. In fact, just this month, we rotated off two of our founding trustees, Cameron Nealon and Kevin Hawkins, to welcome Joe Lambert and Tasha Mellons Cohen of JISC and Project Counter, respectively, um, who are just beginning their three year terms. We also formalized our board committee structures to allow for community input and bring in community perspectives uh, so that we can have those at the table when we're discussing board diversification, fiscal sponsorship of our effort, and the development of our own data trust governance policies going forward. Initial governance documentation efforts created so far include our community charter role descriptions to inform those who are interested in coming on board and joining any of our committees, as well as a disclosure process for completing interests. We're also in the process of planning out workshop and virtual community consultations to develop with stakeholders the principles and requirements for our data trust. Issues we know we'll need feedback on include community governance, the necessary technical and security practices for operations, data processing and usage principles, and compliance mechanisms. We're also seeking funding to support a technical gap analysis to identify the established services in our OE book ecosystem that can act as core IDS service providers in this data space framework, as we want to leverage as much existing infrastructure as possible as opposed to recreating it. Once we have this network and the resulting R&D gaps identified, we aim to pilot a usage data transfer via the data space with two cohorts of usage data creators who agree by our initial versions of the data space participation guidelines. It's going to be a fascinating few years as we aim to apply the disruptive data space innovations, but we're on track to have a system up and running by 2025 as organizations are seeking ways to report and analyze on the holistic OA usage within their own organizational context. If you wish to join us, please reach out by email, follow us on Twitter or LinkedIn uh, for our project updates. Thanks so much for listening. Take care.